this might be the best way to run the 3080 Founders Edition card inside the Cooling Master NR200. But it's not the only good way. Today we're gonna to look at the performance of the 3080 Founders Edition inside the Cooler Master NR200, the NKS M1, and the not quite small form factor Lanley T150. What's up? Welcome back to Machines and More. I've been working through the extended series on the 3080 and now we're turning our attention to the 3080 Founders Edition card. I've looked at how to make an AIB card work well in an SFF case, but as I alluded to in the first look at the 3080 FE card, I really like the Founders Edition card much more than any of the AIB designs. The two slot design fits neatly into SFF cases. In fact, for many SFF cases, this will be your only 3080 option. And it allows for full 25 millimeter fans for all of these three cases here. The cooler is elegant and innovative. And despite this top exhaust causing all sorts of headaches for some case designs, the consistency and predictability of the exhaust pattern means that the builder can direct focused purposeful airflow in SFF to mitigate its impact. With that in mind, these three mini ITX cases kind of represent a wide swath of airflow configurations to test with the 3080 FE. There is the sandwich style, which I haven't had a chance to test yet, but I will cover that in a future video. So in the corner, we have the Lian Li TU-150, which isn't as airflow optimized as the other two cases since it's not very well ventilated. The CPU cooling and GPU cooling is fairly good though in general. It runs best as a positive pressure system with the general airflow direction from front to back and bottom intakes to assist GPUs. Then in the middle we have the Cooler Master NR200 which in its vented configuration has the best airflow out of all these cases. I'll be looking at this setup in both the vented and NR200P tempered glass panel setups. The best setup for both CPU and GPU cooling in this case is bottom intake to top exhaust and side intakes for CPU cooling such as with an AIO or a top-down cooler such as Noctua's C14S. Now depending on your CPU cooler you may have the option to install a 92 millimeter fan at the back if so desired even though it's generally not necessary. And the last case we'll take a look at today is the NK M1. And this one here is kind of my personal driver. And uh, specifically for this test, I reconfigured it a few ways to test the 3080 Founders Edition card. I haven't really reviewed this case on the channel yet, but I might take more of a detailed look at it in a future review. It's just hard to rip it apart and be using it at the same time. I'll emphasize that this is not necessarily a CPU cooling comparison across these three cases since I do have three different chips inside of each of these cases. But the CPU was running during the benchmarks to see how much of an interaction that there was with the GPU. And thankfully there wasn't too much. And seeing how the GPU works in a more stressful environment allows us to see what's kind of the worst case scenario. Now the GPU used in all these three cases was exactly the same one. Uh, so it should give you a set of useful inferences uh, depending on your case choice just for the GPU thermals. Having the CPU running at 100% is a bit unrealistic with what the 3080 series is best at, which is high res 4K gaming, but I wanted to get an idea of the worst case scenario. So in general, under real world 4K gaming, you will see much gentler thermals at the CPU level. So at a high level, I hope this will provide you some inferences that will help you determine whether or not you might wanna get 3080 for your SFF or mini ITX build, or build a smaller system around the 3080 FE card. In fact, I am fairly certain the variations across these cases will also reflect similarly with the 3070 Founders Edition card. Now, I know the 3070 Founders card looks like a conventional cooler, but it's anything but. It's exactly the same dual axial cooler idea as its higher powered siblings, just with both fans on the bottom. All right, 24 liters, not quite SFF. Uh, fine, we'll call it smaller form factor, how about? Whatever, those are just numbers, right? It's a nice small case despite not being small, less than 20 liters, and I really like it. Uh, this is the only one with a really nice carrying handle. It does look a little bloated next to the other three and doesn't take a 240 millimeter AIO, but it does take a knock to a D15. The Lian Li TU-150's front to back airflow arrangement works very well for the 3080 Founders Edition card, of course. This does work at a detriment to CPU cooling since the GPU's exhaust is effectively getting channeled through the cooler. I tested with the Ryzen 9 3900X with both the Noctua U12A and the Noctua D15. 
running at very close noise levels. Although the D15 did come in with slightly lower fan noise. Uh, one thing to note is that with the GPU running, it was not possible to hit the same overclocks as could be achieved without. Uh, simply because 300 plus watts is kind of a huge penalty to add to CPU cooling. So I locked the CPU at all cores at 3.8 gigahertz for all tests just to make sure that all the benchmarks would complete. Uh, in general, you can expect the 3080 Founders Edition card to work at about 45 degrees or so over ambient in the TU-150. Keeping in mind that the faster you run your CPU exhausts, the better the card will run. If your CPU cooler is just cruising along, you'll likely see slightly worse thermals. Uh, there was a scenario I wanted to test where the airflow direction was reversed in the case from back to front. And while this really benefits the CPU cooling, it's extra bad for the GPU. After some investigation, it was evident that while in theory this type of arrangement might be best for CPU and GPU thermals, uh, this opening under the front panel of the TU-150 creates a channel for the hot exhaust to go back under the case. Effectively, all this uh, exhaust is getting forced into here, and that's where the bottom fans would re-ingest it. So I would really stick to the front to back orientation on this case. At any rate, if you do expect to overclock the CPU, and run the GPU at full throttle simultaneously, I would exercise a little bit of caution for this case since the CPU won't overclock as well due to the interaction between the GPU and CPU thermals. So moving on to the Goldilocks of SFF cases here, the NR200 in that just right size for most people. The biggest observation from this set of tests that I ran with the NR200 is that the 3080 Founders Edition card loves the NR200 and the NR200 loves the 3080 Founders Edition card. The big reason for this is that there's a good enough amount of room above the card's top mounted fan for the card to exhaust effectively. And also this top fan right here, right overhead, helps immensely. Now I'm fairly certain Nvidia didn't design the Founders Edition card with the NR200 in mind. And since it preceded the FE card, the NR200 couldn't have been designed with the card in mind, but somehow they were like a match made in heaven. There's a little coverage from the PSU shroud uh, over the top exhaust. Moving the PSU shroud towards the front position won't really help because now it'll sit too low for the card and it would still cover it partially if it could. Uh, whether it was the top cooler, the top down C14S, the AIO cooling solution, the card ran at roughly 40 degrees over ambient, and that's the ballpark you can reliably expect at 100% load since the GPU is basically unaffected by the CPU exhaust direction. The worst arrangement was the low profile Big Shuriken 3, and even that was still extremely competitive at about 43 degrees. Now the C14S actually presented me with a unique set of customizability, and I'll dive into that a little bit. The extra space uh, when using the C14S on the rad panel meant that an extra fan could be installed, and here I went with an airflow optimized uh, not to a Chromax S12A. And initially I expected that an exhausting fan right here could improve the GPU thermals, which it did to some extent, but the CPU temps also increased. And the reason for that is that the exhaust to GPU heat gets sucked right back in by the A14 fan directed at the heat sink. So that's a zero sum game. As a, an intake, Actually, the CPU thermals improved. Uh, the extra cool air uh, mitigated some of the exhaust hitting the, the side of the heat sink. Uh, to further optimize things, the 30FE has a couple of neat tricks up its sleeve. Uh, you can control the fan separately, meaning you can emphasize the blower fan or the open cooler fan depending on your case setup. That means if you're concerned about the extra thermal output, um, out the top, you can play with the fans a little bit. And that being said, out of the box, the GPU is already slightly biased on an RPM basis to the blower fan. Since at 60% increments to the fan speeds incur a much larger noise penalty than a similar decrease, I found that the best equivalent noise level can only be achieved with a 65% blower at the back and 50% uh, top fan split. Now decreases to the top fan didn't really reduce the noise much when it went down below 50%, but increases above uh, 60% uh, really uh, shot up the noise level from the blower fan at the bottom. So with that and in conjunction with the side intake, we're getting results that closely rival that from the side mounted AIO with fans at 67%. Seeing this, given the extra cost and mess of tubing and the extra space consumption from something like this AIO, unless you really need the AIO for the headroom on the CPU, I would just stick to the C14S. Anecdotally, my toddler, uh, two and a half year old, was admiring all the testing going on and he came in and pointed at the C14S after I swapped it out for the AIO and he told me, Dad, 
I really like this one better than the black one. And I said, what, the black case um, and the white case? And he, and he said, no, no, that, that. And he was pointing at the heat sink and he told him, oh, the heat sink. And he was referring uh, to the radiator being the black one, of course. So from the mouth of a two and a half year old, the C14S is the way to go here. And I think the key with the NR200 really working so well, it comes down to this top exhaust. For the mesh panel, you have a few good choices, but uh, with uh, the tempered glass panel, you pretty much want to stick to tower coolers, and a rear intaking Scythe Fuma 2 is a good bet. Now, the good news is that while the 3080 Founders Edition still loves the case uh, because of this top exhaust, things are mostly looking the same. The sound levels are a bit lower due to this tempered glass panel, but functionally, the, uh, the fan speeds were doing the same thing. The CPU fans were all at 100% for this test. Now, since I know the NR200P will be a very popular choice for showing off the goodies in an enthusiast running this case, I ran a noise optimized test in this scenario just to give you an idea of what things look like in a gaming situation at roughly 40% CPU usage and close to full load on the GPU. Now for 4K gaming and Ghost Recon Breakpoint at 25 degrees ambient, the steady state thermals hit about 55 degrees on the 3700X and 70 degrees on the 3080FE at 40%. So functionally, it's, um, it's excellent. And here the noise levels peaked at around 48 decibels from 20 centimeters away, which I would actually consider that the total acceptable level for settling into your chair for a few hours. So for the smallest case in our lineup, the N-Case M1 is significantly smaller than, than even the NR200 at 13 liters. But even this case will run the 3080 Founders Edition card just fine. In fact, with the emission of top fans and limited exhaust room, I thought it would be a lot worse, and in some sense it is, but only because the NR200 is so good. At 60% fans on the GPU, in general, you can expect about 50 degrees over ambient with the card, which honestly is still perfectly fine, unless you're computing in a super hot room, in which case, maybe you shouldn't be putting a space heater next to you. At any rate, the C14S doesn't have much headroom for a hot chip like the Comet Lake i9-10850K, which is drawing 200 plus, uh, pushing 250 watts in these tests. But GPU thermals are largely unaffected by the CPU cooling in this case, since you can only run the C14S in low profile mode with a slim fan over in the M1, it's pretty hard to run it without thermally throttling while still trying to meet the same 53 decibel level. Now, so the 240AO is how I usually run this chip and yeah, even a 240 is going to be severely taxed at all core overclocks on the CPU. Now this was just teetering on the edge of thermal throttle at the overclocks when it was trying to meet that noise target. The 92 millimeter fan I have back here uh, running as an exhaust at the rear is also a good idea for this case because the airflow is just fairly limited when you have all the stuff crammed in here. Now, that being said, the Comet Lake chip isn't really designed for use this way since and by design, the thermal velocity boost will kind of burst certain cores up fairly high, uh, depending on its thermal headroom and not everything at the same time. And it's kind of bursty. That of course makes apples and apple, apples to apples comparisons very difficult though. So I did have to lock them. There was an observation I had with a side mounted AIO setup with the 3080 Founders Edition card. And what happened is I noticed there was a lot of GPU exhaust squeezing out in this margin between the top of the card and the radiator and since it was coming out this way because the fans were run as an intake it would just be sucked back in right here and so what i did was i tested blocking off the bottom of the side panel with uh, our good friend packing tape right here just like that just blocking it off and i saw a significant 5.4 degree decrease for the cpu uh, while seeing a slight one degree penalty to the GPU, and that's really insignificant. This kind of puts this V6 N case M1 back to the V5 configuration where you only had vents at the top, but I actually think that uh, this type of venting configuration works really well for this GPU and AIO. So I really hope this covers a good range of SFF and smaller form factor <clears throat> TU-150 uh, case airflow patterns. And I can only highly recommend the 3080 Founders Edition card uh, for all three of these cases and this type of airflow orientation. In these cases, it saw very little interaction from CPU cooling, although the same can't be said for the CPU itself all the time, especially 
with the T150. Um, but the other NK7-1 and NR200 largely has no real impact from the GPU. In summary, at 60% fans, you can expect the following actuals in a 25 degree ambient room temperature. 65 degrees, which is almost unbeatable uh, for the NR200, 70 degrees for the T150, and 75 degrees for the NK one all of which are perfectly competent for continuous gaming. Now keeping in mind that the stress tests that I did are all at full throttle. Undervolting will net you another five degrees of thermal savings with about 100 millivolts, and I'll cover that in a future video along with overclocking this card. And um, that'll allow one to lower noise at the same time while maintaining those same thermals mentioned just now. So hope you would consider subscribing if you haven't already. A big thanks if you already have. And let me know what your build plans are if you are thinking about the 3080 Founders Edition card and an SFF case. So thanks for watching and have a good one.